Um, anyways, if you've got questions, I saw some earlier questions, so I'll probably go ahead and tackle those while we wait for folks to come in. Uh, but questions about sports tech, about anything really, uh, I went ahead and just chroma keyed in this Amsterdam thing I took because I'm really in a bad um, like little uh, room right now. I don't have an office yet or anything like that, so I'm just in a spare bedroom with a bunch of boxes in it. Uh, it's super echoey and it's weird lighting and the wall has a bunch of holes in it, so um, I just went and was stuck on a green screen on it and then called it done. Um, by the way, a bunch of folks have asked about the t-shirt. So the t-shirt I will link to somewhere. I don't have anything to do with the company at all, um, but uh, people love this t-shirt. It's totally awesome. It's got basically the handlebars there and uh, it says uh, Shimano on the side of it, blend of SRAM and Shimano. Um, so super, super cool stuff. It looks like, of course, a, a TIE fighter. But at some point I'll put a link in the description there um, or I'll dig up a link for whatever it is. So. Questions. Uh, IQ2 power meter is the very first one I saw back earlier there. Um, so IQ2 is a power meter that I went and saw um, like three weeks ago, four weeks ago now, a month ago I guess. Uh, and here in the Netherlands they are a, a spacer, if you will, based power meter. So it goes in between your pedal and um, your crank arm. Uh, it's 149 euros, uh, whichever that is in dollars, not much more than that. And then 200 bucks for dual sided power. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. The big catch. They didn't have a working prototype that I could take with me and go out for a ride. Uh, it sounded like they had working prototypes for indoors, but not yet for outdoors, or they didn't want to share those, or whatever the case was, which definitely sucks. Like, on one hand, you know, listening to them and talking to them for many, many hours uh, and seeing what they haven't done from a design standpoint, I would say that they, they are definitely, they get it. Like, they totally understand the mechanics of it, the electronics out of it, I would say more than most other startups that I've seen. Um, but I think they're definitely way over or underestimating how difficult it is to get a power meter market. They're coming at from like the engineering, they, they engineer like wind turbine systems and stuff. So that was what they did previously and then they're all cyclists and now they're getting into this. So they're doing some stuff and they've built some really big companies and stuff around that, but it's still not a power meter. It's kind of like, you know, Garmin is a billion dollar uh, whatever company, still they have problem with power meters. So it doesn't really matter how much engineering talent you have behind you, power meters are a tough game. And I think their timelines they set up later on in the summer uh, for release are simply not a chance in hell. Um, but I think down the road, uh, they'll probably get there. My guess is next spring is probably probably quite more viable. So uh, let's see, Konza asked, how long to that indoor trainer 2018 summary review? Um, I would say probably in uh, in the fall usually when those come out. So historically, I've done them based on timing of um, Eurobike and Interbike, which have usually been late uh, August and then mid September for Interbike. Um, that's where most trainers have been announced. Uh, some have gone in the summer sometimes, but uh, usually they didn't start deleting them or start deleting, didn't start um, delivering them until the fall. Uh, that got a little bit better last year, like late August September delivery, uh, but ultimately. You know, it took a it took a while for sometimes trainers to get out later on in the winter. So um, my goal has always been the trainer reviews to put them out like September, October. Once I've had um, time with all the new units in terms of at least some pedaling time, uh, not on the show floor, but somewhere else. Uh, but I don't really want to wait for all trainers. In any case, your bike now is in July, so that definitely shifts the dynamic a ton. I think we're going to see. Almost all the major players announced things in July, and then I think a few things might trickle into the Interbike show, um, you know, in, in September still. Uh, but I think we'll have a pretty clear idea what's coming out from a trainer standpoint in July. So by I think maybe August, September, I'll be able to do a annual review. Um, so let's see, scrolling back up again. Uh, Rodrigo asks. Should I buy a TomTom Tom Spark now that they're leaving the business? Um, I wouldn't buy one at this point. I mean, they make great hardware, they make good software, um, but I, at this point they've basically said they're done. So, I mean, they're done at least in the US market. They're gonna focus on Europe. That's not gonna work. That's that's a fail boat right there. So um, ultimately they're gonna pull out of that, of course, because without the US market, and no disrespect to Europeans, given I'm living in as one, um, but a product by and large, an electronics product cannot maintain or sustain itself just on the European front um, when it comes to like sports technology. It just, just isn't viable uh, in this day and age. So um, that's, that's not, that's not going to work out. So ultimately they're going to kill that product off entirely. It's just a matter of time really before they, before they do that. Uh, getting into gaming, moving to Amsterdam uh, in July and seeing your office woes has 
us working on finding a space earlier than expected. Definitely. Uh, office spaces suck here. I mean, they're, they're actually great. They just suck finding them. Um, they go within like 24 to 48 hours for most of the ones that aren't overpriced. Uh, if they're overpriced, they last a little bit longer. Um, or if, even if they're horrendous, they don't last that long at all. Uh, so it's really, really tough. Uh, I'm hoping, hoping I might have a space uh, next week. We went to see it this week twice, actually. Um, first time we went to see it and we got into some of the adjacent spaces, but not didn't have the key for the space that we wanted to see precisely. Um, and then they went to find the key and they said we're gonna have it for the next day and they can't actually find the key at all. So they have to get a locksmith in. Um, unfortunately, Thursday's been a holiday. Friday is like a pseudo holiday. Uh, so hopefully Monday, uh, we'll see. If, if it is a space that I want, it's gonna be epically awesome. Um, but uh, it's, I'm like anything else, I'm like not counting my chickens until I get into that space and can actually like see it, not see it, I guess, but I mean, somewhat see it. I, I like put cameras to the windows and stuff, and it's actually a really funny story. You probably should read about it on Monday, I think. Um, but the space looks awesome from what I can see of it. Um, short of there being like dead bodies in there, I'm probably gonna take it if I can if I can nab it. Uh, it's gonna be awesome, it's close by, so it's, it's all good. Excited about that. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, Hayden asks, I'm new to cycling. What's the best power meter I can get for a low budget that can help me train for my first century. Um, I would say at this point, I would look at like the 399 range of power meters that are really, really solid for left only or spend a touch bit more uh, and go up to something like a, a power to max usually floating around 500 bucks. That's total power, uh, captures the left and right side correctly as opposed to just doubling the left side. Um, or you can look at like PowerTaps G3 hubs which are down for like a couple hundred bucks, silly cheap on sale, primarily US, I'm not sure if it works out for Europe as well. Um, but I mean, just some some amazing, amazing deals there uh, that you wanna definitely check out. I think those are worth are worthwhile. Um, so let's see, next, uh, also the PowerTap C1 chain ring, they've kind of discontinued that from a retail standpoint, like through shops and stuff, but they're still selling a direct awesome unit if it's compatible with your, your power meter or your uh, crank sets. Uh, let's see, David uh, Bai, um, hey Ray, I'm looking for a new daily diver driver watch. I only cycle, swim, and weight train. Uh, what do you think between the Sunto 3 Fitness or the Vivo Active 3? I have a Garmin cycling computer. So my general stance uh, on almost any type of device platform is keep it within the same device company if you're buying multiple devices. Uh, so in the case of like Garmin, you know, if you have a Garmin cycling computer, I would buy the Vivo Active 3. They've got what's called Physio True Up coming in June, which means that a lot of the advanced metrics will now sync between devices, at least the newer devices coming this June. So that's something that uh, is definitely a reason to do that and have all the same devices. Um, I've been wearing the Cinto 3 Fitness here for you know, like a month, I guess. Uh, it's not a bad little watch. It's not, not bad at all, uh, but there's no GPS in it. So that's definitely a bit of a bummer. And so if you're cycling a lot, you're gonna have to still carry your phone with you and have it sync to that and you're pulling battery off the phone. It's more like, as urban, or as uh, Sunto calls it, an urban athlete type um, uh, watch, like someone who just is focused on like commuting and stuff like that. And I kind of agree with the way they're positioning it. Um, uh, Olivio asks, uh, any predictions on updated Edge 400 units on the horizon? Uh, I don't know, it's tough because we just saw like the 645 music um, dropped back a, a little while ago. Um, so I guess that was CES, but now they're kind of getting out, out in the open on that. So that's there. We just saw the new Edge, uh, whatever it is, uh, 520 plus, the 130. Um, so I think it might be a little while before we see more Edge units. I think they're gonna probably try to catch things up a little bit there. That said, Eurobike and Interbike is when they typically announce them. So that would be like the next station on the, the train stop there for when something um, might happen. Uh, so let me just double check on YouTube. I know folks have been uh, asking, I tweeted out there. Um, so let me just uh, quickly reply that I have fixed the audio issues uh, in case folks were, were looking to, to jump back in again that saw what happened earlier and decided that was a, a giant mess to, to not do. Um, there we go. Okay, audio issues. Just join on back in and there we go. Multitasking. So back to questions. Uh, Konza asks, uh, indoor trainer apps review. Uh, that's a whole different ballgame, but still the same thing. I, it wouldn't be till fall this time. I might have a better handle on it this year. 
Um, indoor apps trainer review, like the whole 20 apps I do all at once, probably the one post of the year I hate the most, to be honest. Uh, it's pretty miserable. I'm hoping though with the new studio, I have a lot more space, which means I'm not like having to, it's just easier for me logistically to do that, um, to go through different trainer apps and stuff and not have to have a bunch of swapping out all the time hardware and stuff. So that's something that um, you would think I would just use the same device, but it doesn't really work out as well as you think. Some some apps are only compatible sometimes with trainers. You gotta end up switching around a lot. And so uh, my hope is that with the new space, I have a lot more space to be able to do that and uh, have it more you know in time for the fall time period. Uh, pin mask, Garmin, Verb, 4K, 60 frames per second. I hope so, but I don't think so. I think Garmin is kind of just watching the market. They've been updating the app. They've been doing the 360 action camera thing. I think they're probably gonna hold for right now is my guess and then see like what might make sense next uh, spring. Um, so, you know, we've seen people talking about like uh, 4K 60, of course, is the new thing, but like 4K 120 and stuff like that. And the chipsets are there to do that already. So I suspect we wouldn't see them just jump in at 4K 60 um, because I think that would basically be like playing catch up. I think they'd rather be on the, the edge of that as opposed to playing catch up. Um, David asks, uh, 520 plus progressing. So yeah, the 520 plus, uh, so I've got another one over here. This is the European one. Um, this one here, um, <laughs> sorry, the girl's looking through the window and uh, with the baby as well, like just just taunting me, I guess. Um, so the 520 plus, uh, Garmin announced it back, I guess almost a month ago now, it's Sea Otter. It wasn't, it wasn't great. Uh, so it, in terms of my beta unit, I had a lot of problems, primarily on routing. Um, I would route and things would just like go into Netherland, uh, not the Netherlands, but like Netherland, like nothing there, it just uh, it'd be like a blank map and all that. Um, and of course it was beta, but that was sort of the plan. I still released at that point uh, on that and I said, this is really, really bad. And I had a bunch of freeze up issues, I had a bunch of issues. It was just a bad, bad situation. So they end up holding off uh, shipping of it. They end up basically saying that they're gonna stop um, any sort of shipping or gonna, before they roll it out and they've been fixing it, they've been working on issues. Um, I would say that the routing is dramatically improved now on this. Um, you know, it used to be in the past that like you typically get routing instructions or the map pops up like a turn by turn instruction, you're riding on the road and roughly 500 meters, it's actually technically 0.10 miles, but roughly works at 500 meters. Um, it's not 0 0.10 miles, but in any case, it's 500 meters out, 500 feet out, that's why. So 0 0.10 miles, roughly 500 feet out um, or so, it'll put a message on your on unit saying, here's your instructions for your next churn, a little map and everything. Um, I wasn't getting the actual map part of it, so I got a blank page until like within feet of the churn itself, if not after the churn. Now though, on the latest firmware, I'm getting it within like one to two seconds of the notification showing up. So it still is like at 450 feet remaining. So I'd say that's plenty of time. It's not perfect. It's not like where it should absolutely be, but it's definitely within the realm of like acceptably functional. Um, freezes, they figured out the freezing issue as well. Um, so that I've had no freezes. I've been using it now the last uh, week and a half with no real problems. Uh, I think their current plan is to start shipping here in about two weeks or so. So that's what I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, Eric asks, besides cost, any other shortcomings of the R1 drone? Uh, cost is really the big one. The cost and, and the size, the fact that you can't fold it up really easily. Um, you have to find a backpack that fits in and then once you put it in the backpack, you've got no other room for any other stuff, to be honest. So that's really the biggest the biggest issue. Um, I'm really fascinated to see where that company goes. I think they've, they've got so, so much potential. It's just a matter of them finding a lower price point, which I have no doubt they'll do, um, and retweaking that form factor, which could be more difficult for 2018, but certainly down the road. Um, let's see, Endurance uh, and Power asks, have you made an in-depth review of the uh, Liamo Type R? Are you familiar with it? I'm not familiar with it. I've heard the name, but I can't like recall exactly where it is right now, um, but I do not, do not have a review of it. Uh, so, Kue Pepe um, asks, will there be a December cave visit Amsterdam edition? Definitely. Um, first of all, if I'm not in a cave by December, uh, I'm gonna be like just, I'm gonna set up a um, one of like portable, you know, storage sheds on the street and call that my cave. But uh, absolutely there'll be a some sort of um, a DCR annual cave event, uh, likely December or thereabouts roughly. Um, I've got to see like what festive things are to do in Amsterdam that time of year. It was kind of nice in Paris. I usually tied it to what was the Santa Claus 10K run that same weekend and other like festive things. So 
I'll try to find something that's here that or it's like worthwhile for endurance folks to to come check out. But uh, definitely, I may even do like an open house or something in the um, like a grand opening sort of thing in the fall as well uh, once I get all moved into it. Uh, let's see. Mike asks, any good updates on the Garmin Vector 3 pedals? Uh, good, bad, are they worth the money of the PowerTech P1? So Vector 3 pedals have had a rough go of life. Um, for me, they've been working great. And for, I'm guessing, I wasn't guessing, I suspect about 90% of the people aren't really having any issues. But the people that are, the single digit percentage, it, life sucks and it's, it validly sucks. Um, primarily uh, dropout issues. It's essentially the battery pod connector piece there. And uh, that's uh, got a mechanical issue and they had a bunch of software issues. I think the software issues from what I can see are now all solved. Um, though some of them appear still software issues because of the hardware that's dropping out of the power, which drops out everything. Uh, so Garmin redesigned the battery pods. They were supposed to start shipping out roughly this week. Um, I haven't checked on this week to see if they have. I'll probably put that on my to-do list for an email to them. Uh, but that's the gist. And then they're going to send those new battery pod um, pieces, caps if you will, out to all registered Vector users. Or you can just call support and get one sent to you. Uh, I think the plan was for those to go out widespread. Uh, by the end of the month here. And I, they hope that solves it, but they were also pretty um, open that, you know, they thought they had it solved last fall when, when they started shipping. And they did, I mean, like you didn't hear any issues until September, not September, until uh, January or early February, where the first time people started having issues. Um, so it's, it's a tough nut to, to know whether it solves it longer term. I probably, I wouldn't say we will know for certain until like July, August to see if people have any issues down the road. Um, Let's see, Sean asks, uh, when is Garmin coming out to the new Garmin Phoenix, next generation Garmin Phoenix model, and will it have many significant addition? Uh, I don't know, like Garmin's been kind of on a bit of a roughly 12 to 16 month cycle for the, the Phoenix series. Um, so right now we're pushing the end of that, like we're, we're definitely overdue if we assume that they um, can maintain that same level. Uh, certainly if we were to look at what Garmin has kind of become baseline on other watches, we've seen like, the Vivo Active 3, uh, not the other, sorry, the uh, 400 645 um, had music added to it, so that's kind of like the next step there. It had contactless payments like the Vivo Active 3. Um, so I think those are what I would expect to see in any new, any new wearable from Garmin, whether it be a new Phoenix or um, even just uh, other running watches or anything at all. It's kind of like becoming the baseline for them for mid-range and above type watches. Um, let's see. Do you think you will uh, compare stages in 4Eyes single-sided power meter? There isn't many reviews of 4Eyes. Um, I have a full interview of all the 4Eyes models except the latest uh, one because I haven't really started shipping correctly yet or something. So um, check out those on my site on dcgrammaker.com. Way more detailed than I could ever put on YouTube video easily. Uh, but I think both of them are, are solid units um, in their latest generations, uh, especially in the case of stages with their new Gen 3 and the significantly increased um, uh, broadcasting of the amp plus signal uh, that should solve a lot of the problems people have in the past. Uh, Mark asks, uh, sorry if I missed it. Any word on Withings? Any new scale? We won't buy one from Nokia. You know, I would say I would wait right now. Like, if you can get a, a good deal on a Withings scale, go for it. Like, nothing's going to happen overnight um, in terms of like breakage. I think obviously them buying themselves back from Nokia last week is, I think, a very positive sign. But that doesn't mean they're out of the woods. They now have got to effectively rebuild that company from a market standpoint again. I mean, even if they kept all the employees, which they didn't, so some employees left, um, that would still be an issue where they have to find a way to convince retailers, convince consumers. I mean, they lost a lot of retailers, they lost distributors, they lost uh, a bunch of, of core things that are important there. They lost brand recognition. So um, they've got to, and they also lost product development time. Like if we look at what they did over the last two years since being acquired by Nokia, they did essentially nothing. Um, yeah, they, they like rebranded a few things and stuff, but in the grand scheme of new products, they didn't do anything. And so they've lost as a lot of market share and the market has become much more competitive. Um, I wouldn't have any issues buying a low end uh, Nokia slash Withing scale today just to throw in your bathroom and use. Um, and you know, the other option is really just Fitbit to be honest. Garmin has a scale if you have Garmin devices, but if you don't have Garmin devices, I would stick with uh, the Withings or the Fitbit scales. Um, Steven asks, is the Vivo Active 3 the element bolt of running watches? It's an interesting way of putting it. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I think it's basically like the, 
the best blend of, of stuff out there at a medium price point. Like it's a, it's a really good option right now today. Um, Sean asks, uh, what are your thoughts on the new Aura sleep ring? My thoughts is that I have an email from them that I need to respond back to. That's my thought. Uh, they um, they want to give me a unit. I met with them in London last week before, whatever it was I was up there. Um, and so my, I will do something on it. I'm not, as I said to them, I'm not like convinced about a review yet. I'm, I'm not convinced about the product. I want to see it, um, which isn't to say like I don't write reviews on products that suck. I certainly do. But if I'm gonna spend a bunch of time on a review, like a full in-depth review, um, I want it to be something that I'm not bored with in the first like day. Um, so if I'm bored with it in a day or two, then I'm probably not gonna review it. Um, if it's intriguing but poorly implemented, I'll probably review it. Um, if it's good, I'll probably review it. Um, it's just gotta pass the boredom factor. That's really all things come down to, I think for me in a lot of cases. Like um, they can be a horrendous device, um, but it's interesting. Uh, and that to me is more interesting to write a review on than it is something that's just boring. Uh, so we'll find out. Uh, let's see. Uh, single arm power meters, which one do you recommend? Uh, lots of complaints about stages due to moisture issues during winter weather. Yeah, stages had a lot of moisture issues. I think they're mostly past that at this point, to be honest. I think those are mostly Gen 1 issues, a handful of Gen 2. I think they're beyond that, I hope. Um, Full Rise is another awesome option there. Those would be the two I recommend uh, right now. Um, there is a, a company called Avio out of the UK, Avio, A-V-I-O, um, that's doing some stuff as well. It's really interesting and potentially compelling. Um, I've got a test unit on my bike here, so look for that to pop up the next week and a half or so. Um, so that could be one to, to keep in mind. If you're European-based, it won't be available in the US, but uh, poke around at that. Um, Ryan asks, I met the guys from the Human Hex uh, Muscle Oxygenation Center. Sensor. Any thoughts on the usefulness of our product? Um, it's a lot of people are talking about it. It's something I have on my like to-do-ish list eventually to kind of to chat with them and, and see what the deal is um, in more detail. My challenge with um, muscle oxygenation sensors in general is that people still have a really hard time figuring out how to use it. Like, yes, if you're at the sports scientist level, it's a little more clear, um, but um, it's just, the average person, the, the, not literature, but like just making sense of it for most people is really tough. Um, and I still have concerns around the fact that like placement is an issue. I, I show this with both Moxie and BSX. Um, if I'm putting it in different places on my leg, I get different readings, which um, you have to be really cognizant of that you know, you're using the same readings in the same exact place every single time. There is absolutely a lot of fascinating science behind it. A lot of it's very legit science behind it, but to be super clear about this, um, I'm just not sure if any of the companies, I think BSX actually was the closest to it, did a good job in making it more accessible to people to understand how to train by it, um, as opposed to being like a mystery science theater sort of thing. Uh, let's see, Hayden asks, have you noticed the Edge 1030 software that the personal records don't seem to update when you beat them? Hmm. I have not, but I, to be fair, I haven't like bested a lot of personal records over the winter. I tend to do most of my PRs on head units in the summer. So most of my PRs on my Edge 1030, um, so this thing people that are wondering, are from last, uh, let's see, last summer, last fall. So not so much uh, winter time. So I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have seen those pop up then. Um, Knight Rider asks, any plans for the DCR podcast? Yes, yes, I know, I, I, we've got to figure something out there. So um, it's on my to-do list, I have some ideas, I'd like to get it back up and running again. Uh, it's purely like a logistical thing, it's all it comes down to. I've got some ideas, i got to run past Ben, got to run past someone else. I think we're getting closer. Um, I wish I had like a better answer than that, but that's really all I've got. Um, let's see. Uh, Andre asks, what's your opinion of the new Edge 130? That's this little guy right here. Um, I think it's it's great. I think it's awesome. It's, uh, it's for 199, a great little unit. Check out my video on it as well as my um, my full review on it. Definitely super cool stuff uh, and definitely worth worth the money. But be careful too. Like if you're into advanced data stuff, like it doesn't capture left right balance, it doesn't capture vector stuff, those sort of things, you need to be careful because they aren't in there. Um, so just keep that in that in mind there. Uh, let's see, uh, what else we got here? 
Anyway, I can use uh, Zwift with Apple TV if all my equipment is Garmin and Amp Plus, or do I have to use a PC? Yes, uh, look at a product called Cable um, by NPE, North Pole Engineering Cable. Um, super, super cool stuff. I believe Shane Miller, um, GP Llama on YouTube, did a video on using it. Uh, I think in my Zwift video, um, you can find uh, I use it as well to show how it works, but that will solve your problem. It's like 60 ish bucks, 60, 70 bucks, somewhere in that range, uh, and it routes any Amp Plus stuff into Bluetooth Smart and onto Zwift Apple TV. Awesome stuff. Um, let's see, scrolling on down. Any thoughts on the new Casio GPS watch? Uh, assume you're talking the one that came out a year ago and they slightly revamped it again this past winter. Eh, so-so. Um, I think the coolest thing they're doing there is like the ability to go into a super low power battery mode that's just basically time. But I'm not convinced on the rest of the watch. I think like it definitely appeals to a certain crowd, probably more of like the hunting and wilderness crowd than it does necessarily like straight hiking. I think there's definitely some people doing hiking um, on there, but uh, it's not, it's a little bit tricky. It's not like you're more endurance running, a trail running type watch. It's more of like go out and navigate somewhere kind of watch. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll do a review on it. Um, there's someone that's worthwhile doing reviews, that, that someone that's done some worthwhile reviews on it. Um, that uh, if you look up uh, Gerald, so G E R A L D, Zhang Schmidt, Z H A N G, um, Schmidt, S C H M I D T, um, you can find he's done a bunch of reviews on it. Uh, it's definitely, a, he's doing great stuff on, that, on the Casio watch, so definitely check out his stuff. Um, Let's see, how loud is a Kicker 2016 versus Kicker 2017? Um, the most, the majority of those uh, changes came in 2015 to 2016. So 2016 to 2017 wasn't a huge shift there. Um, again, keep in mind Eurobike is only like uh, exactly two months away, uh, two months minus three days anyway. So um, Wahoo has been releasing trainers every year. It'll be interesting to see if they can hit that same cadence or release cycle again uh, for 2018. Um, so at about another five to seven minutes or so and then we'll kind of wrap things up a little bit because i can hear kids out there screaming for dinner um uh, let's see cruising down here you mentioned on the blog that you don't expect power meter prices to change that much this year but that would be drops in head units um would that be driving by the edge 10 or edge 130 um no i i mean yeah the edge 130 is good for helping out some of the prices but i expect more head units to come over the next month that will drive that price down or next yeah, a month roughly, and then obviously it'll hit your bike as well. But uh, the stuff that I was primarily referring to is about in the next month or so away. Um, so uh, those are both things that had slid that were supposed to be announced earlier and then announced later. So welcome to product development. Um, <coughs> let's see. I have a Garmin Vivo Sport from MP. Um, it can broadcast heart rate over BT or AMP+. Um, so do you think it's possible a software update? Could mean it be possible to connect to an external heart rate monitor. So, it possible? Absolutely. Probable? No. Uh, Garmin doesn't seem to want to do that for whatever reason. I don't really understand why, because they're old like Vivo Fit ones that were like sixty bucks used to do it. I, I don't. I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand it at all. Just allow people to connect to heart rate sensors. It, it gets you more money. Like I'm not sure. What can I say? I don't get it. Uh, Paul C asks, anything new on the Wahoo Kicker Climb? Um, yeah, it's sitting right there. In fact, actually the tripod right now, uh, there's no way I'm gonna try to trim this all around, but the tripod is straddling the bike, straddling the Kicker Climb. That's how little space I have in here. Um, everything is like within one wingspan away from me. Um, but that, uh, anyways, it's been delayed till June. That's a short version of that. Um, they started shipping production units to their distribution facilities in the US. They're on a boat right now, as far as I know. Um, but they didn't make very many of them, like not even container worth. Uh, and so they're holding back until they have more to send out at once. That's kind of their plan. So they're saying like mid to late June, unfortunately. Um, I told them they should ship when the units come in, they shouldn't wait, but that's just my opinion. So uh, let's see, uh, let's scroll down here. I have an Edge 820 and a 400 235. <coughs> if I go on with a two hour ride without watch and come back, will it say move to sync all the devices? Is Garmin planning on doing something about that? No, uh, basically Garmin doesn't count. Your your like rides don't mean anything to your watch. It's like 
it is a what have you done for me this hour sort of thing. Uh, it kind of sucks. It is what it is. I don't expect that to change, unfortunately. Um, the activity thing is most to get you like up and moving and going somewhere, even just walking circles around your couch. So unfortunately, I don't expect that to change. Um, are P1 pedals and speed cadence sensor redundant for tracking cadence? Yeah, I think so. Um, DCR, would you recommend a GoPro mostly for stills on the bike or is it an extravagant purchase for this? I use a GoPro for stills on every ride. Uh, so it's, in fact, that's the majority of what I shoot on my GoPro while I'm riding is stills. Um, I like it in particular, I certainly use my phone a lot too, but I like it because the wide angle shot is great for getting like low shots down um, along like uh, the crank set, that kind of area, um, low to the road, showing the bike and all that kind of stuff. It's It works out great for me. It's also good for the wide angle shot, like in the handlebars. Uh, so that's, yeah, I definitely prefer the GoPro there. Um, any kind of tech you apps that caught your attention? Not really. Like, I use, I tend to use kind of tech you apps with sensor stuff. Like, I've been using it on the Edge devices with the uh, Parapod aerodynamic sensor. I've been using it with the Quark tire pressure sensors, but I haven't really, and I used the Exert one in the past as well. Um, but I'm not like a huge, like, Connect IQ app person like from our watches and stuff, except some advanced sensors like running dynamic sensors and things like that, um, which is kind of funny. You would think I, I might need one, but I don't know. I just, I like a clean watch. I'm not sure why it is. Or maybe it's just I change watches so much that um, I'm just always having a reset of things and I just don't feel like doing it. So uh, Jonas asks, um, Solos for every site Raptor? Uh, so I've got a Solos right here actually. Um, as I drop half the stuff off my desk. Um, so Solos is the heads up display there. Um, and every site Raptor is the same thing, but it has GPS built into it. Uh, so in using the every site Raptor at Sea Otter, I was um, pleasantly impressed actually with it. Um, it's not like, it's not the, it's not where I think things need to get to overall on the platform of heads up displays. Um, I think they're ahead of the, further ahead of the game than Solos is. Solos though is applicable to running as well, whereas every site isn't as much running. I, um, so there are little different angles of it, but I think the advantage right now goes to every site simply because you don't have to take your phone with you. It has a camera and it has other cool stuff like, um, and the display is much, much better in my opinion, um, the way they handle it. There's no, nothing on the outside. So like on the Solos here, you'll notice it's got this doohickey off the front of it um, right there. So like it sticks out the front of the glasses, makes it look like Terminator. On the every site, it's underneath the inside of the glasses, so you don't see anything from the outside. They look roughly like normal glasses. Anyways, review on that soonish. I don't have an every site with me anymore. I don't it was just for uh, Seattle to play around with. Um, is there any way to mount a Polar V650 or other Polar head unit to a Garmin mount? Uh, yeah, you can use a file. So if you get a file, you could file down the inside of the tab a little bit, and it'll pop back in there. Um, so it's not perfect, but it, it works roughly. Um, let's see. Uh, also, by the way, Barfly and so Tate Labs um, sells their out front mount that are combo Garmin and uh, I think Polar as well works in there too. So they, they include all like the adapters in it. So that's one if you don't really want to uh, to take things apart. Um, any comments on Bob asks, any comments on commercial rocker board offerings? Maybe. Uh, I have not tried one myself yet. Uh, I think maybe I've like stepped on one in the show or something, but I've not like brought one home and tried one. Uh, I'm kind of watching Shane Miller, DP Llamas stuff on that, and I kind of agree with what he's saying that it's not quite there yet. Like you're you're sort of you're like the DIY stuff people are doing is awesome in, in, in uh, home setting, like doing their own creating these rocker boards that you put your trainer on top and you you wobble around and stuff. Um, but it's a much harder problem to solve to make it feel truly realistic and outdoor. Um, I think we'll see some, some companies starting to get into it. Companies are paying attention to this, this segment, like major companies. Obviously there's a lot smaller, um, like one or two person companies doing some stuff. Some of them have, have uh, asked to send me some things to try out. So once I get in the new studio and have lots of space, I would like to try some of them out. Again, like some of the things, I'm not really convinced they're there yet. Um, I think they're interesting. But uh, stay tuned. Uh, let's see. Um, any news on Garmin integrating training load metrics over various unit? June. That's the. It was. I think it actually may technically be the last week of May. Um, but it's June is what they're saying right now. Um, it's called Physio Truop is what it's actually called. 
um, which basically means all like the first beat driven metrics across all the units. I have a listing of the units that will be supported with that somewhere, but the short version is essentially newer higher end devices made from 2017 onwards. So things like Phoenix 5, um, Edge 1030, stuff in that realm that has those additional metrics. So like the Edge 520, this one here, doesn't actually have a lot of the advanced training load metrics, so it wouldn't really true up with the other ones. Um, I've argued though that they should at least push some of that data over, like if you have that in a Phoenix 5 or 935, some of that data can go back and forth, so we'll see. Uh, let's see. On TomTom Tom again, as you can see, export the data directly from the watch. Um, I see it working even if they shut down the servers. So I would use another software to log them, am I wrong? Not wrong in theory, but whether it works in practice is always trickier. Um, the thing I would do to double check that is like make sure that you can do that if you unplug your laptop entirely from Wi-Fi or like disconnect from Wi-Fi. Um, make sure that all still works. My concern is that some of those things like break behind the scenes and you don't expect them to. So still, I, I think you're, it hopefully works out, but I just would be kind of, kind of careful there. Um, Let's see, last but not least, any plans to review the Brighton GPS units? Eurosites have listed a new Bolt clone from Brighton called the Aero 60. I'm picking up a Bolt in a week or two, but wondering if the Brighton is a brand you'd recommend. So last time I reviewed Brighton stuff was a couple years ago. I tried it out and um, it, it was just so-so. Like it wasn't, it wasn't great, it wasn't bad, it was just, the software let it down. It was one of those things where like more and more, the reason why people love the Element Bolt and the Element and, and Garmin or whatever is because the software is so smooth and the whole thing just, it works well together. Um, and not talking so much like the on-device software, but the apps, the sync, all that kind of stuff is really, really clean. Um, and I think that's, that's a main driver. So I'm hesitant to do the bright stuff again, not for that reason, but simply because no one cared. Uh, so like I wrote this huge long review, I actually just think two different writing products and there's like six comments on it, um, that's it. And like the views were really, really low. And you know, obviously I, I could probably look at it again and, and look at the products and see, it's just tough to justify that with all these products stacked around me right now, if I'm writing about something that no one apparently cares about. So it's kind of a tough, tough thing there. Um, Todd asks, um, why so little love for those lying uh, enhanced super GPS, more features than Garmin Edge 130 and considerably less money. It's true, the, the Lion definitely has more features. So does a Polar V650, or V650, no, the V for the M460. Um, definitely, they're very, very solid competitors. Um, for me, I still can't get by the clunkiness of what the, the Lion looks like. Um, still, I'm, I think the Lion is on the right path. Uh, I think they're doing cool stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they've got coming down the road soon-ish, I hope. So um, stay tuned. Uh, let's see. I think that is it for questions. So I will leave this here. Thanks for those that stuck with all the audio issues on the previous attempt earlier on. I definitely appreciate it. I think I've got this all working now. I know what to do. I'm going to like screenshot my settings. Be good to go. Um, enjoy. Have a good one. Enjoy the weekend as well.